It was a lot of work, but I will tell you I'd do it again. The experience is just awesome. Great big waterfalls, water rushing down through the canyons. It is something that I will never forget. Oh, great horses. I love these horses. John's horses were just spectacular. You know, they, they pack well, they ride well. Appreciate everything you guys done for me. Show me some good adventures on the mountain with the horses, too. That was a long lost dream of mine that I always wanted to do. Finally got it done. Hi everyone, I'm Dan Miller and welcome to the best of the West. You know, when John Porter headed into the Absorcas with sheep hunter Dick Paget, they had no idea they would be staring in the face of death. Get her? Well, yeah, but... See you might pick up on the driver's side and okay. turn blue channel off. That's what I'm trying Oops. <laughs> What's happening, John Porter? Well, that chain her up, started sliding backwards. I was right behind Matthew and hit an icy patch here and nowhere else to go, so I had to catch him. I had to match speed to the back of the horse trailer, and I managed to do it without bending the trailer door very much. I'll have to look at my grill guard afterwards, but kind of matched speed with him and then applied the brakes, got him stopped. So, could have been ugly. Big old hill off of here. I knew it was a little bit slick, but I didn't think it was gonna be quite that bad. And just started spinning all forward and sliding backwards. There wasn't much I could do about it. So I hit the brake, felt the bump behind me, and saw John's headlight up against the trailer and figured he was helping shut me down. And the only way we could get the horses and trucks saved, we had a long, long way down off that bank. <laughs> it was all I wanted. That speed was pretty good, really. We got lucky. Drive on, let's go hunting. All right. I've waited pretty much most of my life for a sheep permit. I've been putting in for about 30 years. I finally got the opportunity and hunted my whole life, but there really wasn't anybody I wanted to trust with my sheep permit other than Morning Creek Outfitters and John Porter. Just need a taller horse. I have to find a taller stump. I've probably got 45 years of hunting experience, but it's been mule deer and elk. Like I said, this is my first sheep permit. I might find something new that I'd like to do, except I don't know if I can wait another 30 years for another permit. <laughs> Man, there's a pile of elk over there. That's a really difficult place to get to. We're not allowed to camp over there on the commercial use permit. I'm only allowed to camp in certain places hunting now. That's about a, oh, 18 hour round trip to get in and out of there. I got the boys out with some elk hunters right now and we might have to go get into some of them, but that's a pretty major expedition. Our biggest challenge uh, on this hunt so far has definitely been the weather. 
Uh, we started out, it was really cold and snowing, and now it's warmed up quite a bit. And, uh, the weather's still not really cooperating. The mountain's been socked in off and on all morning, but we're gonna work it out. We'll wait on the weather if we have to. Man, now I tell you, if you say these guys aren't hunters, then, then you've been in a tree stand too long. Not only did they have to survive the icy cliff sides, but John and his crew had to wait out the harsh weather patterns that the Absorcas are infamous for. However, persistence always pays off, especially in the mountains. Hey, welcome back to the Best of the West. I'm Dan Miller. If you're just joining us, John Porter is guiding his hunter, Dick Paget on his very first sheep hunt. Now, Dick has been waiting for this for 30 years, 30 years. And now it's down to him and the mountain. Boy Scout at work there. Red Needles works just like Boy Scout fuel. Well, our weather turned pretty sour on us here. It's snowing hard. Looks like it's gonna stay a while. Looks awful dark up country. I did get about 20 minutes there to glass a bunch of that. Didn't even find any tracks that really interested me that, that I thought were ram tracks. So what we're gonna do is uh, my nephew is guiding a elk hunter here and they killed a bull just underneath the hill here so we're gonna go down here help him pack up that bull pack it out see what the weather does a little later but you know that's one of the things we do a lot especially in this area I have these sheep hunters come pretty late and we end up with some snow days but also have some other guides running around hunting elk and oftentimes they spot some rams for us too so let's go have a look at this bull see what they did got I know they only shot one shot, so wherever it landed, that was that. Dark on the bottom side, yeah. Now here's something new for you folks. Little Flatlander Culinary School. How to burn a pizza. I was coming up the trail this morning. If I don't show this off, I'm never gonna live it down, so the first blood was mine. Well, Brian just got up here to his bull, him and Matthew. And we got to hear the shot crack and then the gun to go boom because we were actually closer to the elk than they were. What'd you say they were, Matthew, 680? Uh, 680, yeah. Didn't have a good place to throw a pack down and build a rest, so I pulled out my shooting sticks. Uh, got Brian settled in there and uh, this bull came cruising up through there and finally got an opening on him and 680 yards, squeezed the bullet right in back of the shoulder on the other side and he didn't go very far. <laughs> this is where we found him piled up against this tree. The old Huskama optics you can just adjust right for so you can hold right on it. Worked pretty good didn't it Brian? Worked excellent. <laughs> well hey congratulations buddy. Thank you. <laughs> good shooting man. Finally found what we're looking for over here, I think. 10 rams in a pile, pretty good ram. Yeah, it's a long ways around. We gotta go all the way back off of this ridge, across up the bottom ways, up on the, the ridge that they're on, but we'll be coming in from downwind. Also, depending on which one of the two ridges we go to, it should be somewhere between 300, 500. Um, not too bad, should be shooting right into the wind. If they'll hold up there, we'll sit here and watch them for a little bit till they bed back down, make sure they don't move on us, and then make a run on them. Now they're a pretty good ram over there. If we can get close enough to yeah. get a shot at him, he looked awful good on my wall. Fong Draymond, I've got a spot reserved on my wall that I've had reserved for about seven years. I've had to fight a couple times to keep pictures from being hung on it, but I'm going to get my ram up there.
Old Dick sounds pretty determined, doesn't he? The rugged mountains of Wyoming can break a man, or they can make him. And like most mountain stories, this one's not over yet. But trust me, when this one ends, you'll be talking about it for days. Hey, welcome back here to the best of the West. John Porter is closing in on a sheep for his client, Dick Padgett. But the mountain isn't finished throwing obstacles their way just yet. up here. We're going to slip up the hill here. I think, if I'm predicting this right, we ought to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 yards. I'm going to take the right-hand side of this knob instead of the left-hand side because he's left-handed. Make it easier for him to lay down. So, we'll see how it works. We may have to adapt and overcome. bit to get an angle on that one because he's right behind it. He's the highest one of the two, of the three, right? Of the three, yeah, just left of the great big dead tree. Right. We've got a pretty strong wind, but it's pretty much just a headwind. Variable about five to 15. A little bit of snowflakes I see is blowing from the left. Hold clear up on the front end of his shoulder. After 30 years of waiting, Dick's got a tag in his pocket and a ram in his sights. He's going to pull the trigger now and put this ram on the ground without a trace of an entrance or an exit wound in his hide. You believe me? See if I'm telling the truth when we come back. Stay with us. Hey, welcome back. Well, if you've been watching us on this show, you know that John Porter's got his client on a trophy ram at 600 yards. You also know we've been hinting at this incredibly precise shot the entire show. You've waited long enough. Let's see how this hunt unfolds. A little bit of snowflakes I see is blowing from the left. I have you hold clear up on the front end of his shoulder. I knew when I saw the shot go to the left that the wind had switched on me and I hadn't noticed that. But I was thinking about we need to hold one bar over and before I could get that said to Dick, even though the ram was facing us, he was comfortable with the shot. He held one bar over like he was reading my mind and put one right down the center. Beautiful shot. Nice follow-up shot. Nice! <laughs> Good one, man. Oh, man. The windage enabled reticle on the Huskama scope makes it fast and simple for precision follow up shots. Light it right up on his brisket. Good shooting, baby. <laughs> that is a nice ram, buddy. When you shot that head on shot right there, I think it went right down in his. <laughs> like that, I think he caught a little piece of his chin right in his chest. And 
the old 6.5. That was much of a target standing there looking at you at that distance, I can tell you that. Uh oh. Down a pretty slick, muddy hill, and my scabbard got turned upside down and dropped my gun in the trail. And in the last hour, I'm wondering how I was going to eat some crow and has the almost like a shooties. Long range shooter, but thank God I didn't have to, he volunteered it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dick finally asked me to use my gun. And I told him that's fine, but rent's pretty high on a gun like that this far up the creek. My knob's back down to my 200 yard zero, scope power down to five, firing pin down. That way you can look at my gun, I can look at yours. You can check me, I'll check you many times over. Repack my stuff here and go get our ponies. Daddy's mouth open because you stuck it right down in his mouth. Can't believe it. Was it worth all the 30 years of waiting? Every bit of it. Mighty fine 37 inch Wyoming Ram. Don't know how you could beat it, buddy. And a mighty fine shot. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good one, man. I love it. See this this right here is his, his lamb tip. Okay. That's a year and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half. I don't even care about the halves. <laughs> you know, while on a hunt like this, a lot of the guys are really focused on the trophy and the spot they got picked out for it on the wall. But at the end of the day, when a guy comes home and he looks up on that wall, when he sees that animal, what he remembers is the friendship, all the details of the hunt. That's what'll stick in his mind for the rest of his life. Oh, I think that'll ride for a little ways. Another day in paradise. Off the hill. Now tell me that wasn't incredible. After braving all the challenges of the Absorca Mountains, the opportunity to take a trophy presented itself. The right technology complemented Dick's keen shooting ability, allowing him to make the quick adjustments to make the kill. Outstanding job.